Hello and welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. Are you curious which games I would pull off the shelf when I'm itching to play a game and there's no one around to play with? Well, you clicked the right video. Stick around to see my top 10 solo games of all time as of August 2020. I first want to thank our Patreons for helping us reach another funding goal. I'm actually creating this video to celebrate that accomplishment. Thank you for all the support and helping this channel grow. Also, if there's any top 10 lists you guys want to see on the channel, leave them down in the comments below. All right, before we get to the list, I want to give a little background here. I've been in the modern board game hobby since about early 2012, but only really started solo gaming sometime in mid-2019. So basically for only about the last year or so. Currently, I've only played 32 solo games so far. Another thing to note is that I have very little interest in playing solo games using multiplayer setups, like running two characters at the same time or playing two-handed or more. I'd much rather prefer to play games with a true solo mode, similar to how I enjoy playing most video games. I also realized when making this list, I prefer to play most of these games multiplayer over solo when given the chance. With those tidbits out of the way, let's get to the list. My number 10 solo game of all time is the Hostage Negotiator series by Van Ryder Games. In Hostage Negotiator, you play as a law enforcement agent responsible for negotiating the release of hostages taken by an abductor. The game is a solo only hand building game where you play cards and resolve tests using dice. So far, I've only played the content in the base game and the standalone expansion Crime Wave, and I have so much more content to experience uh, from this series uh, that I want to play through on the channel in the future. But so far, it's impressed me so much that it's made my top 10 solo games of all time. Some things I really like about this game are the theme, the quick setup, quick play time, lighter rule set, and tense gameplay. This is the game on the list that I would choose if I had a small amount of time, and I couldn't leave the game on the table between sessions. So easy to put away. I like all the different strategies you can take with each abductor, and they aren't always obvious right away. At first, I was worried I wouldn't like the game as much because of the luck of the dice, but after playing it, I realized the dice mechanic fit the theme of dealing with an unpredictable situation, like negotiating with a teacher who's gone off the deep end and is holding some of her students captive. I'm looking forward to playing with some more of the expansion content, like additional abductor packs, the career expansion, uh, on the channel very soon in the near future. That's my number 10, the Hostage Negotiator series. My number 9 solo game of all time is the Marvel Champions card game by Fantasy Flight Games. Marvel Champions is a cooperative living card game set in the Marvel comic universe. You're superheroes battling villains trying to thwart their schemes. A living card game is a card game that starts off with a base game with minimal content that is meant to expand over time with small content expansions. This is basically like a subscription to the game system. In the past, I fell in love with Lord of the Rings The Living Card Game, and this game uses the same system, but this time it's been tweaked to kind of fit the superhero theme. I love trying to play each turn as efficient as possible and trying to get combos to fire off. I like how each hero and each villain have a different feel to them uh, with the deck building and you can customize them even more. The only downside for me is that I really don't like to take the time to deck build in advance of playing. I just want to get into the action ASAP. But the community for this game is awesome and they share decks online so I can take one of those and build it and then tweak it uh, to my desire. Uh, also, the modularity of the deck building system is helpful for this too. I can't wait to play the campaign expansions coming up in the future for this game. Watch for those live playthroughs on the channel in the future. That is my number 9 Marvel Champions LCG. My number 8 solo game of all time is the Aeon's End series by Indie Boards and Cards. Aeon's End is a cooperative deck building game where you're a breach mage just trying to take down a nemesis by improving your deck, charging up abilities, and casting spells. The big draw for me in this game is you have full control over your strategy by not having to shuffle your deck. You control what cards are placed in your discard pile in what order, which was a super mind-blowing concept when I first played this game. The game is also a very good quality deck builder, and an ever-growing amount of content is released for this game each year. The only issue I have from a solo perspective is some of the mages in the game do not feel and play well enough in true solo, and a lot of solo gamers recommend playing this game two-handed, but there are more than enough true solo mages in this game to keep me happy. That's my number eight, Aeon's End. My number seven solo game of all time is Shadows of Killforth, a fantasy quest game by Hall or Nothing Productions. Shadows of Killforth is a sequel and standalone expansion to the game Gloom of Killforth, which at the time of this recording, I have not played, but I hope to someday. Shadows of Killforth is an adventure game with a high fantasy theme. You build a character by choosing a class, a race, a story, and then visit locations, dealing with encounters, and trying to collect cards with specific keywords you need to complete the chapters of your story. All the meanwhile, building up your character to take down a final boss. The best thing about this game is the high quality art. Seeing a ton of cards spread out on the table has never looked so good. I love stopping to inspect the art on each card I draw every time I pull one from the many decks. 
This game has a lot of replayability due to the various races, classes, sagas, encounters, abilities, and ancient demons included in the box. To me, this game has a very living card game, collectible card game kind of feel, uh, but without the need to chase down expansions, which I guess makes sense considering the price of the box. I very much look forward to playing more of this game solo on the channel in the future, and that's my number seven, Shadows of Killforth, a fantasy quest game. My number six solo game of all time is the Hexplorit series of games by Mariucci J Designs. I'm including both the Forest of Adramon and the Valley of the Dead King that have been released so far because they feel similar, yet different, and I can't decide which one I like over the other. They both do some unique things with the formula that I really like. These are both fantasy adventure games where you create a character using one of many classes and races included in the box. Then you pull out a dry erase marker and use that throughout the game to record your stats, your items, your adventure progress, and even resolve battle math. Uh, this game has you exploring and expanding the overworld map trying to complete quests and build yourself up to take down the final boss, or starve and die trying. The game will reward you with treasures, but also will try to kill you with enemies, bosses, weather effects, and afflictions. There's also the overlooming threat of the final boss that will come and get you if you take too long in the game. I really like the variability of the crazy amount of content they've included in this box. The playthroughs are long, but they don't feel that way. I love getting lost in the worlds that these two games provide. The only downside to me is that the survival food system in the game can be a tad annoying when playing true solo mode uh, with no other party members to trade with, but that is easily solved by taking a race that doesn't require much food consumption at all, if any. This is my number six, the Hexplorit series. If you like this video and want to see more top 10 lists like this one on the channel, click the thumbs up button down below this video. Also, thanks for making it this far in the countdown. All right, my number five solo game of all time is Cloudspire by Chip Theory Games. Cloudspire is inspired by MOBA and tower defense video games. In this game, you're spending currencies to hire units and heroes and buy items and upgrade your base. Then each wave, you're deploying units and heroes in a specific order to march towards the opponent's base and then clash on the battlefield. In the solo mode, you play through a campaign of scenarios learning how to master each faction in the game using a story-driven campaign book. This feels very much like playing through a single-player mode of classic 90s real-time strategy PC games like Warcraft. You can also earn currency by completing challenging side objectives and buying special abilities to use in future scenarios. Each scenario is a brain-burning puzzle and feels very replayable with multiple paths to victory. Each scenario is also very challenging, especially if you're trying to achieve those side objectives. There's also an endless horde mode included at the back of the solo book where you take on waves of enemies trying to see how long you can last. As usual with Chip Theory games, this game is full of high quality components, high quality gameplay, and lots of content which makes for a very heavy box. The amount of solo content is so impressive and it's only just a third of what the game has to offer in addition to the multiplayer PvP and co-op modes included in the box. This rule set is very complex and uses a lot of keywords that you have to remember, but at least they're included on various reference sheets included in the game. The only downside for me is trying to wrap my head around all the solo rules changes that are unique to each scenario setup and then remember them while playing. This becomes easier the more hours you spend exploring the content in this game. I'm very much looking forward to playing additional solo content on the channel in the future from the Ankar's Plunder expansion, which should be released later in this year. That is my number five, Cloudspire. My number four solo game of all time is Too Many Bones, another Chip Theory Games game. Uh, Too Many Bones is a dice-driven adventure game that has similar components and production quality to the previous game on my list, Cloudspire. In Too Many Bones, you choose a tyrant final boss to hunt down, then you build the deck of encounters and stacks of baddies based on that tyrant that you'll deal with on your journey. Then you choose a gearlock hero to set out on the adventure and make your way through new encounters each day, which can present you with choices that could lead to things like a battle or bonuses or boons for a future encounter, or even possibly a dexterity mini game. Completing an encounter successfully will lead you to earning points that you can spend to upgrade your stats and buy new skill dice that you have to roll in battle and that have interesting abilities. There's even a cool twist to this game when compared to other dice driven games is that where misses can be saved up to fire off powerful abilities during battle. I love making the choices in this game from which upgrades to perform on your character to which dice to roll in combat on a given round. Too Many Bones is a special game that you can tell was a labor of love for the awesome folks over at Chip Theory Games. I very much look forward to playing through the third wave of expansion content on the channel very soon when it comes back in stock in Canada. That is my number four, Too Many Bones. My number three solo game of all time is Spirit Island by Greater Than Games. Spirit Island is another brain-burning puzzle game similar to Cloudspire's solo mode, but in this one you play as spirits trying to help the locals fend off invaders to their homeland. 
Every turn presents you with tough decisions, trying to find the most clever use of your cards and abilities to work towards your goal of destroying the invaders. I love the unique play style of all the various spirits. The replayability is extremely high with the amount of content available for this game. I purchased this game because it's ranked in the top spot on a lot of solo gamers' top 10 lists, and now I totally understand why. I love the challenge in true solo of trying to win without the help of other spirits and overcome the weakness of your spirit by making choices when upgrading cards in your deck throughout the game. I very much look forward to playing through the Jagged Earth expansion content later this year on the channel. And that's my number three, Spirit Island. My number two solo game of all time is The Seventh Continent by Sirius Pulp. Seventh Continent is a card-based exploration adventure game where you are sent back to an island to remove a curse that has plagued you. This game has you exploring the island, looking for clues to remove your curse while trying to survive all the bad things the island throws at you. Your deck is your life, and you have to be careful to balance how much of that deck you exert when completing tests versus when to rest and eat to fill the deck back up. The story hidden in this game is amazing, and the survival and exploration is top notch. I look forward to attempt to remove other curses on the channel later this year. This is my number two, Seventh Continent. My number one solo game of all time is Mage Knight the Board Game by WizKids. Mage Knight is an adventure game where you play as a Mage Knight, exploring the land, preparing yourself to take down a city filled with enemies. Mage Knight is at the top of my list because there's a lot of the things I love about the other games that I've previously mentioned in this video. It has that brain-burning puzzle feel each turn when you're trying to optimize how you play your multi-use cards to move, fight, or shop. You also have to make the best decisions with the tools and information the game has thrown in front of you each turn. It has the exploration and adventure I love to see in games using its random map that reveals itself as you explore the land. It lacks in the story department, but the story you create as you play the game is where it shines. The game's systems are deep and complex. The game is also long, but extremely rewarding. I look forward to playing more of the other solo scenarios included in the expansion content on the channel in the future. And that is my number one, Mage Knight the board game. All right, that was my top 10 solo games of all time as of August 2020. If you're interested in seeing me play through any of these games, I have included links below in the video description. Also subscribe and join me for live playthroughs of these games on the channel in the future. Thanks again to all of our Patreons for making this video possible, and thank you for taking the time to watch. If you have any favorite solo games that didn't appear on my list, I would love to hear about them. Please leave them in the comments below. I'm still relatively new to solo gaming, and I'm always on the hunt for some great true solo games. Thanks again for joining me at Rob's Gaming Table, and I'll see you in the next video.